So a few weeks ago, I put together a video on pulling in parameters using Power Query, and it was probably the most watched in the shortest amount of time video that I've put out since the channel began. Well, I wanted to put together a follow-up video for that. Now, if you didn't get a chance to watch that video, I'll put a link up here in the corner of the screen. You can click on and go watch that. But just as a very quick recap, what we have here in this green table is a list of options for the user to pick from. So they can pick their product, they can pick their region, they can pick their supplier, they can choose a date range, and then they can come over here and click this little run button. And this is just attached to a macro that runs a refresh. And then that updates the red table. So if I were to come in here and choose baseballs, central, athlete stream, and I did it just for 2023. I'll run, and now it's Baseball Central Athlete Stream just for 2023. Now that's all well and good, but what happens if a user doesn't pick a product? What if they leave that cell blank? Well, when I run the macro, it doesn't return anything. Or what if I didn't pick a region? What if I left that blank and I ran the macro? Again, it returns nothing. Or what if you didn't pick a date range? Again, we get nothing. And worst case scenario, if the user doesn't pick anything and we run the macro, Still, we get nothing. So what we need to do is we need to build in some error checking here to detect whether or not a user has made a choice. So if they didn't pick a product, then don't filter by that product. Or if they didn't pick a date range, then just show all dates. If they didn't pick a supplier, show all suppliers. So let's see how we can put this error checking in here. If you'd like to download this file and follow along as I demonstrate this, there's a link in the video description. You can also download the file and use it as a resource to go back and copy paste some of these solutions from this file to yours. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a free resource that you can use to beautify your M code. So how to take that ugly M code that's difficult to read and turn it into something that's easy to read. Let's begin by opening the Power Query editor and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt F12 for that. We can see the two queries on the left the query that brings in the parameters and the query that brings in the data. Let's start with the query that brings in the parameters. Now just to recap the steps, we connect to the source, we transpose the table, we promote the first row as a header, and we set our data types. But this is assuming that the user has made an entry in each of these arguments. We need to build some error checking into here. There are always multiple ways of solving the same problem in Power Query. This is just the approach that I'm taking. If you know of other approaches that you think are better, please put them in the comments and we'd like for you to share it with the rest of the viewers but this is just one of many possible ways to solve the problem. So we'll go up to Home, Advanced Editor. So here's the underlying M code where it's just bringing the entries in with no error checking at all. We're going to add two steps to this process. One step that checks for the start date and one step that checks for the end date. I'm gonna hit Done. So let's go up to the Add Step button. We'll click FX. And we're going to use a function called Table Replace Value. We'll point to the previous step called Change Type. And what we're looking for is to see if they failed to place a date in that argument. So we're looking for a null. And we need to replace that with a date. So what I'm going to do is just select the first recognizable date in Power Query, which is December 30th, 1899. Now we can't just type in December 30, 1899. This won't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this inside of a date function. And so this is looking for the year 1899 the month 12, and the day 30. Now the column that we're performing this replace on, we're going to use the function replacer, replace value. And this is going to examine the start date column. Start date is the name of the field that holds the variable that the user typed in for the start date. This has to be placed into curly braces and double quotes. And now we close off the table replace values function. We'll hit check. So we can see that the user did provide a start date, so the replace values function wasn't executed. Well, it was, but there was no null in that column to replace. Now I need to do the same thing for the end date. So if they don't define an end date, I want all sales from the start date into the future. This is basically the same formula, so I'm gonna highlight this and copy it. I'll hit escape. Let's go ahead and rename this step missing start. So I'm going to start a new formula. This one is pointing to the missing start step. I'm going to temporarily replace that with the copied formula, but now I have to change the reference to point to the missing start step instead of the change type step. So now we're looking for a null, but now instead of replacing it with the oldest date that Power Query might understand, I'll replace it with a date so far out of the future that I know it's never going to apply to my data, like the year 2100. And we'll pick the last day of the year, December 31st. This is going to scrub through the end date field of the parameters table, and if there's a null, it will replace it with this far into the future date. Now like before, because we do have an end date here, nothing gets changed. Let's rename this step to missing end. I'm gonna go ahead and close and load. 
And let's test this out. If I search for all transactions in 2023, we'll run the refresh. You can see we have only transactions for 2023. If I delete the start date, then I should get every record from the beginning of the data set up until the end of 2023. And as you can see, I do. If I were to start with a date like January 1st, 2023, but provide no end date, we'll give it a refresh. Then my results begin in 2023 and they go all the way through the end of the data set, which is November, 2024. If we don't have either the start or end dates defined and we refresh the query, then we'll get all transactions. Now we're still filtering for product, region, and supplier because we did define those. But like before, what happens if we don't define a region and we refresh the query, it's going to fail because we don't have error checking at the product, region, or supplier level. So let's build the error checking for those. Alt F12 to go back into the Power Query Editor. And this time we're going to go to the data query. We'll start with the filtering of the products. Peeking back at the parameters query, we can see that product is currently set to null because the user did not supply a product. When that null is fed to the data table, in the step just before it, when everything is still working properly, we can see all the products. But then when we filter for product, we're saying, show me all rows in the table where product is null. There aren't any rows in the table where the product is null, so it returns nothing. What we need to do is check that parameters product field and say, hey, if this is not a null, go ahead and do the filter. But if it is a null, show me every record. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up into the formula bar and we're gonna use an if statement. And we're gonna say if, and I need to point to the parameters table product field. So I'm just gonna copy that, come back here and paste it. If the parameters query product column first row, now remember Power Query starts counting at zero, so that's the zeroth row. If that is not equal to null, which means the user has supplied an entry, then, and I'm gonna open up my formula bar here, we actually want to execute the filter and say filter for product and use what's in the parameters table. Otherwise, we want to see every record, so we'll just put true. And true is just a way of saying if it exists, I want to see it. Now when we hit check, we see every row. Now to test this out, let's close and load this back. So now we're seeing every record for Northwest Tennis Joint, but we see all the products. If we select a specific product, like basketballs, rerun the query, now it's Northwest Tennis Joint basketballs. If we leave out the product, Northwest tennis joint, all products. Of course, now what happens if we leave out the region, run the query, the query fails. It's not that it's failing. It's just that it's returning every record where the region is null and there are no nulls in the source table. So let's Alt F12, go back into the Power Query editor. Let's go back to the data query. So we need to perform this same if statement for the region and the supplier. Now, because I'm a little bit lazy, I don't want to type this again. And plus, I might make a typo. Every time I do this, I increase my chances of screwing up. So I'm going to take the safe way out and I'm going to copy this. Now I'll go to the step for the region and I'll take the existing filter, paste down the logic from the product step, but I have to change product to region. And now I'm showing all regions because the user did not provide one. Therefore, it was a null. So I just show all records. Let's do the same thing for supplier. I'm gonna take the existing filter, replace it, and I'll change all of those to supplier. The last step just sorts it by date. Let's close and load this back. If I were to provide no filter selections whatsoever, I get the entire table. If I were to choose a start date, say June 1st, 2024, and an end date, December 31st, 2024, rerun the query, I will get all the transactions for the second half of 2024 for every region, every product, every supplier. If I pick a product, baseballs, rerun the query. Now we're only looking at baseballs, but I'm still looking at every region, every supplier. I'll pick a region, refresh. Now it's just Northeast. Pick a supplier, Sports City, and now it's baseballs, Northeast, Sports City in the second half of 2024. So I can now use these in any combination and just say, I wanna see everything from tennis joint, all transactions. Now there's every tennis joint transactions for all time. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that I was going to show you a way to make your M code look beautiful. If we go back into the Power Query editor, we'll go to the data query, go to advanced editor. And if you look at my M code, notice how much nicer this is, how much easier it is to read this compared to standard one line per step M code. Especially when you get into these if then else statements, it's a lot easier to understand the code. Now, how did I achieve this? Well, first, let's revert this back to just the way Power Query likes to write the code. So here's how Power Query would normally represent the code. Now, at a minimum, what I like to do is go in here and add blank lines between each of the steps, just so it's easier for me to recognize where one step begins and the next step ends. 
So at a bare minimum, I like to do this. But this still isn't the easiest way to read this. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to click in the M code, do a control A and select all the code, and then copy it, control C. Then I'm going to open up my web browser and go to this website, powerqueryformatter.com. This allows you to paste your code into the website, click a button, and have it beautify your code. Now to do this, we have this little animation that's running just showing us what it does. But if you click in the animation, this will open up the editor. Now there's an entire library of existing queries that you can pull from. So let's say you want to do a list percentile. You could say open snippet, and it will show you the code for that. So it's a great resource just for doing research or finding out how to do something that you might not know how to do. That also can't be done with just the point and click interface of Power Query. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of that and delete it and paste my query that I copied from the advanced editor. Then we'll go up and click the format button and now we have beautiful code. And you can copy this as straight plain text or as HTML. I'll go back to Power Query. I'm going to delete all of my original query and replace it, Control V for paste, with the formatted query from the website. Hit done. Everything still works properly. So now if I have to go into the advanced editor, this is going to be a lot easier to deal with. Now I would still go in here and maybe put those blank lines in that I talked about, just to visually separate this a bit more. Hit done. Everything still works the same. The only downside is when you get to some of these steps, like in this case, the change type step, you can't read the entire query, so you'll actually have to expand your formula bar and you may have to scroll through. This is really the only downside. But in most cases, I'm not working in the formula bar, I'm working in the advanced editor, so I can see everything really nicely here. So that's Power Query parameters with error checking. Like I said, it's one of potentially many different ways that you could have solved this problem. Now, if you have another way to do this that you'd like to share with everybody, by all means, place it in the comments. I'd love to see how you're solving the same problem. We should always be open to learn from other people's techniques. Thank you so much for watching the video. Share it with anybody that you think might be able to benefit from this, and let us know what you think in the comments. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.